which moment occurs at the radio ulnar joints two options are flexion and extension abduction and adduction pronation and supination or circumduction the correct answer is c that is pronation and supination the radio ulnar joints allow the radius to rotate around the ulna enabling pronation and supination of the forearm question number 27 the clavicle articulates with which part of scapula two options are acromion coracoid process glenoid cavity or spine of the scapula the correct answer is a that is acromion the clavicle articulates with the acromion of the scapula at the acromyoclavicular joint question number 28 what type of joint is the shoulder joint two options are hinge joint ball and socket joint pivot joint or saddle joint the correct answer is b that is ball and socket joint the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint providing a wide range of motion in multiple planes question number 29 which now is responsible for the funny bone sensation two options are median now ulnar now radial now or musculocutaneous now the correct answer is b that is ulnar now the ulnar now when compressed at the elbow causes a tingling sensation known as the funny bone question number 30 which tendon is most commonly involved in rotator cuff injuries two options are supraspinatus tendon infraspinatus tendon subscapularis tendon or teres minor tendon the correct answer is a that is supraspinatus tendon the supraspinatus tendon is prone to injury due to its position and repetitive overhead movements question number 31 hello friends welcome back to dear competitive exam youtube channel today you are attending 100 most repeated and most important question answer session based on upper limb and this is the part 2 of the series i'm sure that you don't want to miss the first part and the link of the first part is given in the description so let's challenge your quality of learning let's see what will be your score out of 50 from this part 1 so do watch this video completely to make yourself more fit to answer any kind of question and at the end if you find this video helpful then please do like subscribe and share this video to all your friends who are preparing for upcoming any kinds of medical exams let's continue question number 31 which structure stabilizes the head of the humerus in the glenoid cavity two options are deltoid muscle rotator cuff muscles coracoid process or clavicle the correct answer is b that is rotator cuff rotator cuff muscles the rotator cuff muscles supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis stabilize the head of the humerus within the shallow glenoid cavity question number 
which now supplies the deltoid muscle. Your options are axillary now, musculocutaneous now, median now, or radian now. The correct answer is A that is axillary now. The axillary now innervates the deltoid muscle, enabling shoulder abduction. Question number 33. The introsiosis membrane connects which two bones? Your options are humerus and radius, radius and ulna, ulna and scapula, or radius and carpal bones. The correct answer is B that is radius and ulna. The interseosis membrane is a fibrous sheet connecting the radius and ulna, stabilizing them and providing attachment for muscles. Question number 34. Which muscle is the primary flexor of the forearm? Your options are brachialis, biceps brachii, triceps brachii, or pronator teres. The correct answer is A, that is brachialis. The brachialis muscle lies beneath the biceps and is the strongest flexor of the forearm at the elbow joint. Question number 35. What is the origin of the biceps brachii? Your options are coracoid process and supraglenoid tubercle, acromion and scapular spine, radial tuberosity, or medial epicondyle of the humerus. The correct answer is A. That is keracoid process and superglenoid tubercle. The biceps brachii has two heads. The short head originates from the keracoid process and the long head originates from the supraglenoid tubercle. Question number 36. Which joint is a hinge joint in the upper limb? Your options are shoulder joint, elbow joint, wrist joint, or acromyoclavicular joint. The correct answer is B that is elbow joint. The elbow joint is a hinge joint allowing flexion and extension of the forearm. Question number 37. Which carpal bone articulates with the radius? Your options are scaphoid, pesiform, trapezium, or capitate. The correct answer is A. That is scaphoid. The scaphoid and lunate are the primary carpal bones that articulates with the distal radius. Question number 38. Which structure prevents anterior dislocation of the shoulder? Your options are coracoacromial ligament, glenohumeral ligaments, deltoid muscle, or biceps brachii tendon. The correct answer is B, that is glenohumeral ligaments. The glenohumeral ligament strengthens the shoulder joint capsule and prevent anterior dislocation. Question number 39. Which nerve is affected in a fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus? Your options are axillary nerve, radial nerve, ulnar nerve, or Median now. 
the correct answer is a that is axillary nerve the axillary nerve is vulnerable to injury in fractures of the surgical neck of the humerus leading to deltoid muscle weakness question number 40 which muscle is responsible for forearm supination your options are pronator teres supinator flexor carpi ulnaris or extensor carpi radialis the correct answer is b that is supinator the supinator muscle rotates the radius laterally enabling supination of the forearm question number 41 which artery is the main supply to the forearm your options are subclavian artery radial and ulnar arteries brachial artery or axillary artery the correct answer is b that is radial and ulnar arteries the brachial artery divides into the radial and ulnar arteries which supply the forearm question number 42 what type of joint is the wrist joint your options are ball and socket hinge candeloid or pivot the correct answer is c that is candeloid the wrist joint is a candeloid joint allowing flexion extension abduction and adduction question number 43 which nerve is commonly injured in a mid shaft humeral fracture your options are axillary nerve radial nerve ulnar nerve or median nerve the correct answer is b that is radial nerve the radial nerve runs in the spinal groove of the humerus and is susceptible to injury in mid shaft fractures question number 44 which tendon is tested in the mt can test options are infraspinatus tendon supraspinatus tendon biceps brachii tendon or subscapularis tendon the correct answer is b that is supraspinatus tendon the mt can test evaluates the integrity of the supraspinatus tendon which is part of the rotator cuff question number 45 which nerve innervates the flexor muscles of the forearm your options are radial nerve ulnar nerve median nerve or axillary nerve the correct answer is c that is median nerve the median nerve innervates most of the flexor muscles of the forearm except for the flexor carpi ulnaris and part of the flexor digitorum profundus question number 46 which muscle is involved in thumb abduction your options are pollicis longus abductor pollicis extensor pollicis longus or opponens pollicis The correct answer is A that is abductor pollicis longus. The abductor pollicis longus abducts the thumb, moving it away from the palm. Question number 47. Which vein is located on the lateral side of the arm? Your options are basilic vein, cephalic vein, median cubital vein or axillary vein 
The correct answer is B that is cephalic vein. The cephalic vein is superficial vein running along the lateral side of the arm. Question number 48. Which structure is the primary stabilizer of the elbow? Few options are Annular collateral ligament, annular ligament, radial collateral ligament, or biceps brachii. The correct answer is A that is annular collateral ligament. The ulnar collateral ligament stabilizes the medial side of the elbow joint. Question number 49. What is the function of the flexor digitorum profundus? Show options are flexes the wrist, flexes the distal phalanges of the fingers, extends the fingers, or abducts the fingers. The correct answer is B that is flexes the distal phalanges of the fingers. The flexor digitorum profundus flexes the distal interphalangeal joints of the fingers. Question number 50. Which muscle extends the fingers? Extensor digitorum, flexor digitorum superficialis, pollicis longus, or Flexor carpi radialis. The correct answer is A that is extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum extends the fingers at the metacarpo, phalangeal, and interphalangeal joints. Time is to comment your score out of 25 questions. And friends, thanks for joining us on this exciting journey. If you enjoyed the quiz, and learn something new then give us thumbs up and let us know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our upcoming exploration of fascinating topics in the medical field until the next time stay curious stay healthy see you